This video introduces the idea of acceleration. So before we start talking about acceleration, I just want to remind you that the triangle symbol delta means a change in, in math and science. So as an example, delta V means the exact amount that velocity has changed. It's the literal number amount that velocity changes by. I'm also introducing two new variables before we start talking about acceleration. U is now going to stand for the initial velocity or the starting velocity of an object, and V is going to stand for the final velocity of an object at the end of a problem. So we can now start talking about acceleration. So acceleration is the change in an object's velocity divided by the time the change takes place. Acceleration is a vector. The variable for acceleration is lowercase a, and the unit is meters per second squared, or meters seconds to the negative 2. I'll explain why that is a little later in the video. So the equation for acceleration is the change in velocity over the time that has passed. And the change in velocity is going to be equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So just as an example, if your final velocity is 5 meters per second and your initial velocity is 2 meters per second, the change in your velocity is the final minus the initial, or 3 meters per second. We'll start with an example problem for this equation. So we have a car accelerating from rest at 10 meters per second squared for 6 seconds. What is its final velocity? I'm going to plug this into the guess method. So I'm going to write down my given information. I can see that the starting velocity is going to be zero because the problem says that a car accelerates from rest, so from a velocity of zero. And the time that it takes to accelerate is six seconds, and the acceleration itself is 10 meters per second squared. So we want to know what its final velocity is. So our unknown is the final velocity. Obviously, the equation that we're using to connect these is the acceleration equation that we're learning now. So now I want to solve this equation for the final velocity. So I just need to isolate that v, so I'm going to multiply both sides by t. Those cancel out. And I'm left with the final velocity is equal to acceleration times time plus the starting velocity. I'm now going to substitute and put in the numbers that I have. And when I do that, I find that the final velocity is 6 meters per second. So this kind of makes sense because if the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, that's the same as saying 10 meters per second per second. So every second that passes, the velocity is going to increase by 10 meters per second. So if it's starting from zero, after one second, it's going to go to 10 meters per second. After two seconds, it'll be going at 20. After three, it'll be going at 30 meters per second until six seconds have passed and it's going 60 meters per second. So just to visualize this with a velocity vector, again after one second it's going at 10 meters per second, after two seconds it'll be going at 20, and by the time we get to six seconds it's going at 60 meters per second. One misconception about how this acceleration happens is students sometimes imagine that when something is accelerating, it's going at a constant velocity each second. It's just a higher velocity every second. So it starts off at a constant slow velocity for one second and then gets faster and faster and faster and faster and kind of jumps to the next velocity like that. But that's not really how it works. The correct understanding is that it's kind of one continuous increase in velocity. It just gets faster and faster and faster instead of kind of jumping up the velocities like that. So just to visualize this with a speedometer, the misconception is that every second the object is just getting exactly 10 meters per second faster and just jumping up like this every second. But this is not what's happening. Instead, what's happening is just a continuous increase where every second, every full second, the velocity is exactly 10 meters per second faster. So this is what it would actually look like, just one continuous increase where every full second leads to a 10 meter per second increase in velocity. A lot of students are also confused about why acceleration is a vector. The reason why acceleration is a vector is that acceleration is a change in velocity and velocity is a vector. To show how velocity changes over time, we need to use another vector to add that change to the original vector. So as an example, if at a time equals zero, our initial velocity at zero is 10 meters per second, and after one second has passed, the velocity is now 12 meters per second, that vector is that much bigger. So we can describe the change in velocity as itself being a vector. If we connect the tip of the original velocity to the tail of the change in velocity, we can use vector addition 
position to see how the velocity is changing into that new velocity. So that red vector of two meters per second to the right is the change in velocity. And because acceleration is the change in velocity divided by time, that's also going to be a vector. Here that's just two meters per second squared to the right. The direction of acceleration matters for how the velocity changes. If the acceleration points in the same direction as the velocity, the object will speed up. And if the acceleration points in the opposite direction as velocity, the object will slow down. To build up your intuition on this, I'm going to draw a black vector to symbolize the velocity and a red vector to symbolize the acceleration. So I'm going to imagine that every second the object is getting this much faster, the acceleration vector faster. So if I add these vectors tip to tail, I can see that the new resulting velocity after one second is going to be this long. So because acceleration is pointing in the same direction as the velocity, it's making the velocity bigger over time. So this tells you that if the acceleration points in the same direction, the velocity is getting bigger. And if the velocity is getting bigger, that also implies that the acceleration is pointing in the same direction as the velocity. So it works in both directions that way. So let's compare this to slowing down. If an object is moving fast but slowing down, the change in its velocity, if I connect it tip to tail, is going to be working against that original velocity. So if an object is moving to the right but slowing down, that means that the acceleration must be pointing to the left to create this new velocity vector after one second. And then if that acceleration continues to apply and we connect these tip to tail, you can see that over time the velocity is getting slower. So this is a really important concept. If the acceleration and the velocity point in the same direction, the object is getting faster over time. And if the acceleration and velocity point in the opposite directions, the object is getting slower over time and vice versa for both. And we can also use that rule in the other direction and say that if the object is slowing, the acceleration definitely points in the opposite direction. And if the object is speeding up, the acceleration definitely points in the same direction as the velocity. This may seem really specific, but the direction that an object is accelerating is going to be one of the most important things that you can identify in high school physics. It's going to come up again and again in future units on forces, and you're going to have to be ready to identify the direction of acceleration. Another common misconception that students have is that they think that positive acceleration means the object is getting faster and negative acceleration means the object is getting slower. But this is not true at all. This is not a correct understanding. The correct understanding is that if the acceleration has the same sign as velocity, again, if it's pointing in the same direction, the object is getting faster. And if the acceleration has the opposite sign as velocity, that means that the object is getting slower over time. I've made a table to demonstrate this where the columns each show a positive starting velocity or a negative starting velocity. And the rows show either a positive acceleration or a negative acceleration. And we can observe how each one changes over time. So these are the starting velocities and the accelerations. And just observing how these are changing over time. You can see that the velocities that are getting faster, that are getting a bigger magnitude, are the ones that have the same sign as acceleration. So just one more time, if the velocity has the same sign as the acceleration, the object is getting faster. This holds true for negative velocities as well. So you can see in the bottom right, there's a negative acceleration, but the object is getting faster and faster and faster in the negative direction. So whether the acceleration is positive or negative by itself tells you nothing about whether the object is speeding up or slowing down. So looking at the other two parts of this table, you can see that when the acceleration and velocity have opposite signs, that's when the object is slowing down, not necessarily when the acceleration itself is positive or negative. There are three ways that an object can accelerate. In high school physics, we never use the word deceleration. We always use the word acceleration to mean any change in velocity, even if the size of the velocity is getting smaller. So even if the object is slowing down, we still call that an acceleration rather than a deceleration.
Another situation where an object is accelerating is where it's changing direction, even if it's keeping the same speed. If the magnitude, the size of its velocity is staying the same, but it's changing its direction, that is actually also an example of acceleration. This is the one that confuses students the most because it's not really at all how we use acceleration in the everyday world. In the everyday world, we only use acceleration to mean speeding up and sometimes slowing down, but we never really use it to just mean changing changing a direction and keeping a constant speed. There are a few different ways I can explain why changing direction is an acceleration, but all of these ways of explaining it comes down to the idea that velocity is a vector. So because a velocity is a vector and has both magnitude and direction, a change in just the direction is still a change in velocity over a certain time, which is an example of acceleration. This velocity that I'm showing now going east is a different vector than this velocity going north. So because here the velocity is changing from east to north, it's a change in velocity even though the size of the velocity is staying the same. So if the direction changes, the velocity technically has changed even though the size hasn't changed. And therefore because the velocity has changed, it's an example of an acceleration. Another way we can understand this is if we look at the x and y components of the velocity vector, you can see that each individual x and y component is accelerating. The x component is getting slower and the y component is getting faster and faster until the entire vector is just the y component like that. So because those involve two individual accelerations to change the x and y component values, a turn is going to be considered an acceleration.